Okay, a Ford plane build update number, I think it's number eight. Uh, previous videos, you've already seen the front part of the fuselage here. It's on the gear. I turned it sideways in the basement here, so I have room to work on this. Um, I was away for a bit. Of course, I mentioned in the last video, off to Oshkosh and kids and vacation, etc., etc. But life is back to normal, so back to the build. Um, so the last couple weeks have been consumed with doing this pipe, uh, bending all of the uh, empennage stuff, as you can say. And I'll tell you right now, I did not enjoy this tube bending exercise. It was part of the build I was looking forward to and it turned to be a real pain in the butt. This um, pipe bender and I became friends or frenemies I should say because me at 150 pounds soaking wet had a real tough time bending this tubing. It's really strong stuff. Um, anyway, so let me go through quickly the changes that I made. Um, you can see here how I meant, uh, I kind of mounted this I think as per the plans here, but I did it a little bit different in the back. The rear mounting, they're just calling for one bolt, but I did that, this sort of arrangement instead, instead with an L uh, bracket there and bolts on either side. Uh, it gives a bit more rigidity. If you've ever fl flown ultralights, actually take a look around, turn your head around, look at that empennage at the back, and it's really flapping around in the breeze. And so this will hopefully give me more rigidity. I'm um, going to change the tape, the shape of the tail a little bit that you'll see here. Now the drawings kind of look like this, as all of you probably have. This to me, it actually reminded me of an RV6, a Vans RV6 tail. Looks kind of like that, and I fly a Vans RV7, and one of the changes that Vans made was they made the tail a little bit bigger. The rudder kind of rounded it off a bit. To me, it looks a little bit nicer. This looks like an RV6. I changed mine to kind of like the RV7 look. Um, a little bit uh, flatter at the top, as you're going to see right there. One of the things with this plane that concerns me is the amount of adverse yaw that it's going to have. Um, uh, because of just it's an ultralight and so this bigger empennage, bigger vertical fin at the back might help with some of the adverse yaw even with the differential ailerons uh, that I'll put on. It's still going to have a lot of it but that was hopefully to minimize it. Other changes, um, my elevator here, um, when I didn't have enough rudder authority, when I did this as per the plans and I couldn't get a bend, this 90 degree bend here, I'll try to show it here best with the camera, this 90 degree bend was a maximum I could get with that horrible little thing. So I put a secondary bend in here and but even when, but when I did that and it was the length that the plans call for, I didn't have enough rudder throw. The rudder was hitting about here and so I wanted to increase that a bit more so I shortened this whole thing. So I cut it and put a splice in here and now I got good uh, authority here and it looks and it works out pretty good because this angle here, this piece of straight pipe acts as where I mounted my bell crank and now I got a straight shot to the bell crank that has to go down under there. So that was kind of nice. There's the rudder bell crank under there. This is the elevator. So it's actually, it's about four inches shorter uh, per side than the plans call for. But again, if you fly ultralights, you kind of know these things are usually pretty pitch sensitive. I think I'm going to have still plenty of elevator um, authority with that size of it. And you guys can comment on that if you like, but that's kind of where I'm at. So that's kind of where the build is at right now. Next steps is going to be the bell crank here. I got to order a whole bunch of parts. You can see there's miscellaneous bolts and things in here. Aircraft Spruce is getting a big order here. Part of it's that bearing, that uh, BC4 WC10 bearing I need there. And then of course the push cable is going to go in here. Then we're going to arrange the seat, which is seen before in previous builds, in uh, previous videos, uh, and the control stick and all that kind of stuff. So those are the changes I made. Oh yeah, uh, a lot of splices. Put a splice in here. The way I did mine, I know the plans call for four inches. I put a six inch um, insert, riveted it, and I also put epoxy in there too. So I glued it in there, riveted it in there. So there's a, there's a, there's a joint there, one there, back there, up here, there's one down there. So I had to use quite a bit uh, of them, but I'm confident they're pretty strong. There's another one here. It's plenty strong. It's not gonna fail there at all, I don't believe. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. So a different tail. And uh, no more pipe bending for now. On to some other bigger things. So there you go. Build update number eight. And I'll check in with you later when i got something else to show.